56 Chevy S10 with a 4.3 engine. Cranks, but it won't start. Now this has a central port fuel injection. With the central port fuel injection, you need 60 to 66 pounds of pressure for it to start. They're pretty temperamental. If you don't have that, it can be drivability problems. We hooked up the fuel pressure gauge. This has a Schrader valve, so it's easy to connect it for your fuel pressure gauge. Turn the key on, we had about 48 pounds. We started it, cranked it, actually ran. Got about 50 pounds of pressure. That's nearly not enough pressure. At 50 PSI, it actually starts and runs. But if you load the engine down, it'll die. Now you could just assume here the fuel pressure is bad. Maybe it's a fuel filter, maybe it's a fuel pump, maybe it's a central port fuel injection unit, maybe it's a poppet valves. There's a lot of things you could assume. The best thing to do is get evidence. We've got some evidence. We've got some evidence here with the fuel pressure, but what generates that pressure? The fuel pump. Let's tap into it with the lab scope and see what that fuel pump looks like. So we're going to show you using a lab scope how to look at the electrical part of the fuel pump and determine whether or not the fuel pump is good. We'll show you how to set up your lab scope, how to connect it, how to interpret the waveform. Locate the fuse that powers the fuse pump. Look at your electrical diagram. In this case it says it's fuse number nine. Pull up fuse number nine. Use a fuse jumper similar to this. Plug it in the place of number nine. Take your current clamp. You've got to turn it on. If you look, it says off 80, 20. Over to the right, there's a digital signal. And then the top is 80 and 20 with an analog signal or a sine wave. Now, which one do you set it on? If you're looking at digital, you use the bottom two. If you're looking at an analog or a sine wave, you use the top two. Do you use 80 or 20? Easiest way to do this is, what's the size of the fuse that we pulled out? We pulled out a 20 amp fuse. So you should move this up to the 20. If you were on a circuit that was more than 20 amps, you'd need to go to the 80 amp setting. Once you get it turned on and set, then you need to push the zero tab so that it will zero. Do all of that before you hook it up to the wire. If your polarity is wrong, simply unhook it, turn it around, reattach it. Okay, on my particular scanner, when it opens up it's over here and I come over to scope meter. Now I want to choose lab scope. Now I want to go down and choose the low amp, 20 amp. Double click that and it's opening up the low current amp. Now this is a four tray scope. I've got it plugged into the yellow. Now turn your current clamp on and zero it out. And you should see your yellow trace go to zero. Now you can clamp it around your wire. Now at this point, remember we're plugged into yellow, so we're going to watch this yellow trace. When I turn the key on, that is how it is set up. Now reading across here, we're reading the yellow, so we're going to read this yellow box. We're on the low amp current, 20 amps, 0 to 10 milliseconds. You can change all of those up here in your sets in your setup, in your sweep, in your trigger, and cursors, and so forth. So when we turn on the key, watch the yellow trace. That's the fuel pump. As you know, the fuel pump's going to run for a few seconds. If you don't start the vehicle, it's going to turn it off. That's what we had. Now that was a little bit hard to see. So if we want to change it and see it a little better, we can go up and change our sweep. We're at 10 milliseconds. Let's broaden it out to 20 milliseconds. Okay, now you see we're reading from 0 to 20 milliseconds. We're still reading low amp current, 20 amps. Let's turn the key on again. That's the same thing over 20 seconds. Now I want to do it one more time. I'm going to change my sweep to 50 milliseconds. This gives you the ability to look at it a little bit differently. Now when I turn the key on, you can see there's like three different places there. 
Now when we start this vehicle, you can see the lab scope. Now here's where the lab scope, when every time it goes down, remember you're dropping down to zero volts. We're on the yellow trace, so you're reading the yellow numbers. You're zero volts. It goes up over seven or eight. Now I want to change the sweep while we're live. I'm going to change my sweep to uh, 50 milliseconds. It just compresses it so you can see the fuel pump is running up here and stopping. The fuel pump's running. Now when you shut it off, if you stop when it's down here, it's not going to restart for you. Change my trace to 100 milliseconds. You can see it again. We've got a lot of dropouts. Now if you were looking at 500 milliseconds, it would look like that. Going back to the original preset, was 10, 10 milliseconds. You can't see it. There's one long drop out there. That's why it's easy sometimes to go to more milliseconds and go back up to 50. It gives you a better picture. You can see the dropouts very clear. So now we've got evidence that fuel pump is bad. Electrically it is bad. If it's bad electrically it can't be good mechanically. We're going to change the fuel pump then we'll come back and show you the same vehicle with a good fuel pump and show you what the good waveforms should look like. Okay, we've replaced the fuel pump. So now we're going to we know we got a good fuel pump. We turn the key on. And you can see it run for a few seconds. And that's a good pump. Now we're going to just start it. Again, we're looking at the yellow trace. 0 to 10 milliseconds. You should have approximately good pumps across here, about eight of them. They should be nice uh, sawtooth type waveform. So that is a good fuel pump electrical pattern. Okay, change the fuel pump. You can see the new pattern. We got a nice electrical pattern. We got a fuel pressure back. Engine accelerates well. Learn to use your equipment. It'll help you not guess, but find evidence so that you can be sure of your repair. So that's how to hook it up on a Chevy Blazer, Chevy S10, anything where the fuse panel's inside the door. You can do the same thing. This is a 97 half ton, 350. Be probably 96 through 2000. The fuses are right down here underneath the hood on the under the hood fuse box. When you take the uh, fuse cover off, you see the 20 amp ECMB. Don't take my word for it. Use your electrical diagram. Make sure you're on the right fuse. But you hook it up basically the same way. You pull the fuse out. Hook up your fuse bypasser in there. Hook up your amp clamp to it. And you're ready to look at your pattern.